If you are fighting human beings, listen now. If you are fighting fellow human beings, you are in the wrong fight. If you are fighting uh, imaginary wishes, if you are fighting imaginary villain wishes, you are in the wrong fight. Look at it. Put on the whole armor of God that, that put, on the, put on all the armor that God gives you. So that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. No power. Not the devil's power. His tricks. The devil's weapon is in suggestions, in lies, deceptions. Not in his raw power. The devil cannot look at you as a born again believer, nostrils and kill you. He can't look at you as a, as a Christian. I'm not too poor. He can't do it. The behind premature death is the devil. You have said he has come to steal, to kill, to kill. God didn't come to kill. Satan has come to steal. When the enemy steals your money, it's, it's God, not God has stole it. It's, it's Satan has stole it. When he has come to steal, to kill and destroy. People blame God. They blame God for what the devil is doing. We are looking at strategies. In this life, there will be issues. There will, there will, there is, we, are, we are in a war. This life itself is a war. As long as you are here, there is an enemy that is arrayed against you. And his name is the devil. He's not your brother, he's not your sister, not your uncle, not your mother-in-law, not your father-in-law. No people that you see around and everything. So people can be just mere tools in his hand. But your number one enemy is Satan. The Bible says he has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't rest. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't go to bed. He doesn't go on vacation. He's working 24-7 looking for how he can steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does for a living. But the same John 10, 10 says, I am come that you may have life. And that you may have it more abundantly. Only it overflows. Is why Jesus came here, the purpose was coming. He didn't have to come for himself. He came for me and you so that we can have abundant life here on earth. And so if you are living below the abundant life, you are living beneath your privileges. And I believe that this morning the Holy Spirit will Use me to make to, to bring the message across to you today so that you can lay hold on everything God has proposed for you in life. You can walk in the victory that God has, God has designed you to walk in. It doesn't matter what you are facing, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter what you are struggling, it doesn't matter the sin you are struggling with. It doesn't matter whether you just slept with somebody yesterday night over to it doesn't matter where you came in, coming from. You see, the enemy will look at and will condemn you because of what you have done in the past. Let me, it doesn't matter what you are even struggling with right now. It doesn't matter where you are right now. Where you are now is not the issue, it's where you are going. Though your beginning may be small, your latter end will increase abundantly. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you are struggling with. It doesn't matter how financially delinquent you are right now. It doesn't matter how, how poor you are right now. It doesn't matter how, I mean, where, where you are, how lonely you are, what you are facing and the kind of things you are going through right now, how you are feeling your body, your head. No, 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 it doesn't matter. What is important is what Jesus came to do and if you can lay hold on it, you are victorious. Praise God. So, hear me, come here, I want to listen to me this morning without condemnation. Without whatever, whatever, no matter what you have done, no matter the foolish mistakes you have made in the past, no matter where you are struggling right now, do not let the devil condemn you. God is bringing, doing a new thing in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. That's our reading. Our text in 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to start from verse uh, 12 to 13. That's where we're reading on this, on this, uh, on this, this topic. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. To 13. Okay? Look at it. Fight! See the word fight here. Fight the good fight of faith. Praise God. Fight the good fight of faith. Then lay hold on an eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Verse 13. And I urge you in the sight of God 
who gives light to all things. And before Christ Jesus, who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. Now, look at, go back to verse 12 again. And let it very slowly. Very slowly. What to go? Fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called. And have confessed the good confession and the presence of many witnesses. Stop there. Now hear me, church. The only fight you are supposed to fight as a child of God is the fight of faith. There's only one fight you are allowed to fight based on the Bible is the fight of faith. Any other fighting you are doing after this one is in error. It's against scripture. If you are fighting human beings, listen now. If you are fighting fellow human beings, you are in the wrong fight. If you are fighting uh, imaginary wishes, if you are fighting imaginary villain wishes, you are in the wrong fight. If you are fighting your mother-in-law, your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, uh, your uncle in the village, your mother's second wife, your father's second wife, and, uh, and uh, your uncle's second wife, and everything, you are in the wrong fight. Give me, let's, let's give me Ephesians 6. Let's, let's back up to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, 12. Number 11, 11 to 12. This is important. If you are in a, another fight rather than this fight of faith, you are in a wrong fight. Okay? You are in a wrong fight. Eleven and twelve. Give me Ephesians eleven and twelve. And give me give me a, a good news. Give me good news. Ephesians eleven and twelve. Listen to this one very well. This is very important. And if you get this one, because see, listen, the Satan's method is to deceive you. If he can deceive you to be to go and fight the wrong fight. Imagine you are going, you want to build a house, you are building on, on, on another person's land. Eh? You have bought all the blocks, everything is bought, everything, and somebody else's land. You did everything to finish it and they are putting ties. And they don't say, what are, you, what are you doing on my land? Then you then you discover that it's the wrong land. Eh? The enemy will want to labor in vain. But if you know how to deal with him, you can defeat the devil in every combat in life. Financially, if it comes against your, your finances, if it comes against your head, you can defeat in every combat. Look at it. Put on the whole armor of God that, that put, on the, put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. No power. Not the devil's power. His tricks. The devil's weapon is in suggestions, in lies, deceptions. Not in his raw power. The devil cannot look at you as a born again believer, nose to nose, and kill you. He can't look at you as a, as a Christian. I'm not too poor. He can't do it. He's been all his past has been destroyed. He only has the power of lies, deceptions, tricks. So, and this is not a joke, church. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. He's destroying Christians with those tricks. He's killing Christians like crazy. I'm talking about born again, spirit filled Christians. He's destroying them with tricks. He's taking away and destroying their finances. He's destroying them. He's making them poor with tricks. He's using, he's using his tricks to kill. He, he lie, lying symptoms. Look at it. We'll come back, to, we'll come back there. Look at it. See, see the next one now. Look at verse 12. Give me verse 12. Just give me verse 12 only. Give me, just, back, let's back to verse 12 only. Look at it. What to go? For we are not fighting against what? No, if you can go to every church in Nigeria and say we are not fighting one piece. We are not fighting one piece. If you go to every, every, every husband and wife, husband and wife, we are not fighting one piece. We are not fighting one piece. We are not fighting one piece. Husband and wife, you, you are not fighting me. you are not fighting your wife, you are not fighting you. If you can get people to understand that it's not a human, it's not a fleshly battle. The warfare is not a fleshly battle. So look at it. He says, for we are not fighting against human beings. But what, what are we fighting? Look at it, look at it. We want to, we want to go. But what? 
Guess what? The wicked spirit are forces in the heavenly world. The rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. These are the enemies. How are we fighting them? How are we fighting them? By, by going to the village, you go and cut trees. Huh? By packing sand. Huh? How is the devil fighting you? Is it he, is he by, by going and uh, doing deliverance? Deliverance. We're going to do del deliverance. Deliverance. Today we're going to do deliverance. No, 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 no. It's tricks. Deceptions. Lies. The devil is a liar and the father of lies. And because it looks so ordinary that it's just a lie, ordinary lie. It looks like ordinary lie, but he uses it to destroy people. You are fighting satanic forces. There are different categories of demons. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And all they are using against you is lies. Deceptions. You see what many Christians are doing is what they call what they call what, what is called the Bible shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. Most Christians are beating the air. They're beating the air. Uh, imagine you are in a wrestling bat this thing and you, are, you you cannot if you want to hit the person's mouth and all you are doing is beating the air. Beating the air. The enemy is laughing at you. Because instead of you to fight, to fight the right fight, you are fighting the wrong fight. Most people are fighting the wrong fight. They are shadow boxing. Hear me, church. The devil has been defeated. Go to Colossians. Let me show you something. Else. Let me show you something. Else. Colossians one. In fact, let's do. Let's do. Uh, Colossians one. Let's, Colossians one, one twelve. Okay. You see, the devil has been defeated. He is a defeated fool. He has been. His power has been taken away from him. He doesn't have any right over you. Colossians one, verse uh, twelve to fourteen. Okay. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Look at verse 13. 13. Want to go? He has what? Delivered us all from the power of darkness and conveyed us to the kingdom of the Son of His Lord. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 13. 13. Give me that in other versions. This, this is, this, this is, what, see, you are not going to be delivered. You are not going to be delivered. You have, you have, you have, you have been delivered already. You are not going to be delivered from poverty. You have already been delivered. This is past tense. Not future tense. Future tense. Look at it. He rescued us. <laughs> he rescued us from the power of darkness and then brought us safe. He, he brought us safe. He rescued us. He didn't rescue us with wounds. With wounds. He rescued us from the power of darkness and then brought us safe into the kingdom of his dear son. Right now, if you are born again, you are the kingdom of light. I don't know whether you're getting this thing this morning. If you get this thing, there is something that begins to rise in your inside against poverty. There is something that begins to rise in your inside against sickness and disease. There is something that begins to rise against in your inside against this against sin. Sin, sin is like a yoke, it's like a bondage. You want to? I mean, when I was talking, when I was talking with this is sex, I wanted to be free. I couldn't get free. I will try tomorrow. This is the last one I'm going to do. I will try this one after this sex next week. I'm going to stop. By the end January next year, no more. This is last December one. When I finish December one next year by January, no more illicit sex. I'm just going to leave. I would, but I would when I by the time January first, I, I do it is January December thirty first. Then go to January first. January first, I go to church, and then we meet in church, and then everybody say, when they say, when they say, Happy New Year, say, oh, Happy New Year, no more sex. By the January third, I was already having it. No strength. There is no strength in the inside. I was under the yoke and the bondage of sin. There is a yoke. There is a power of sin. It's invisible. Power. It's like magnet. Draws you to it. You can't help it. 
But see, hear me, look, look at now. One upon one, after I've been delivered here, so here I was delivered, now I was delivered. So I began to hear the word of God, to listen to the word of God, to hear the word of God, and then the strength to overcome sin came. Because it's like, see, spiritually, you grow spiritually as you grow physically. If you are eating good food, eating good food, you start getting strength. If you don't eat well, you, you, you faint. Then you look, you are not, any small problem can knock you, a small sickness, knock your body, no immunity. No immunity. Because you have not eaten. Your body doesn't have immunity to fight sickness and disease. You, spiritually, when you get born again, listen, when you get born again spiritually, you are a baby, a baby Christian. And a baby needs to be focused constantly on you know, the right diet, diet, right fed food. You need to eat fed food. The more fed food you eat, the stronger you are in your spirit. When your spirit gets stronger and stronger, the sin that easily beset you, that sin that usually messed you up before. Somebody comes in, that way, a very expensive car key before you, or, or somebody comes in and opens this, this time this one before you and then you are wondering whether you're going to look at it you're going to look at it what happens there is strength here to say no 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 you say no 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 that, I, I can't do it i'm not going to do it there is power to withstand it okay what happens is because now you gain victory okay over it but see the thing doesn't come just like that it has to come with with feeding on the word of god consistently the more you feed on the word of God, the more you do that consistently, the stronger you are spiritually. Okay? Are you going to say this morning? So, hear me. No matter what has been holding you captive before, don't be discouraged because you mess up. Sugar. I will never smoke again. The last day, the last day, the last one. I'll try this one. Lie, lie. Then you finish and drop it. I say, that's it. Put on top. Say, that's it. Put on your mouth, say no more cigar. Before you know it, the smell, somebody smoking night, you are hand the smell. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> oh, Then you know, you know, you really, really collect it. Right there is a, a, a pool there. There's a pool. You can't help it. It's, there's a pool. It's very important. When you begin to master this, now, listen now. When you begin to master this, the word of God. We need to get the word of God. That's why the devil, listen now, the devil's area, how does he fight you? He fights you with suggestions and lies to trick you from hearing the word. He pulls you away from hearing the word. Because if you are not hearing the word of God, I don't care how determined you are, you can't make it. You can't make it. They serve you the beer. And say, look, as I'm drinking this beer, I don't want to drink I don't burn again now. I see me so. Huh? I don't burn again. I see I don't want this beer. You take it. When you finish taking it, you say no more. You repent. But I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to drink it. This is wrong. This is wrong. And then you go home and say, I'm going to do it. You don't take communion. And then you say, I'm not going to do it again. If you are not hearing the word of God enough, you can't do it. Somebody will buy you beer free of charge. You know, see, you know, it's when you don't, it's when you want to stop drinking, that's when somebody gives you free beer. Yes. Are you aware of that? Yes. The time you say, I don't want to again, that's the only to buy you one bottle before. It's buying you free. Say, hey, on my neck. Okay. You say, okay, give me the money. Say, no, 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 drink it. Oh, I give, okay, give me half, half of the money. Say, no, no, you must drink the beer. If you are going to go to drink three bottles, you buy it. But you can't give money for one bottle. You see, behind that is Satan. He knows that you are about to be free now from his kingdom. And so he is doing everything to keep you bound. And I shared with you before, but now some women I was trusting them before, I wanted to sleep with them at all costs. I was begging them to sleep with me once. They refused. When I go back again, they said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Ah! <laughs> what? Why didn't you agree? That's fine. You know what I'm saying? How come it's now you want it? You see what I'm saying? See the thing, all of a sudden, yeah, 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 let's do it. Now they're even chasing me around, looking where you are. You say you're coming, and they say you ah. <laughs> see why? You see because as the baby kids, they didn't understand. I was wondering, ah, how come these people are after me now? What before they didn't like me? I was pleading with them, so I would go to, I would carry. Don't I wear condoms and go back to the, I would go to the house and everything to see. No, 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 I'm not going to sleep with you. They were playing. We were using shakara, doing shakara before. Look, nah, nah, go on again. So yeah, let's come, 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 ah. The devils are, see, they see, the enemy is looking for how to get you back. 
right back to the same you where you are. See, that's why the battle is a persistent battle. Life is see, until the devil sees the end of a Christian, the death of a Christian, he doesn't give up. You are going to have to stand your ground against him and make yourself cook yourself with all. You are going to use this one to cook yourself. Because he is not just looking for how to make you to drink beer or sleep around everything. He wants to kill you. I know he can't just kill you that right? So he has to go, he has to look for ways and means to get it done. I know if he can get you to stay away from the church where you are not hearing the word of God rightly, guess what? It's a question of time. You 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 wither. You just wither like that, easy. But the more word you hear, the more strength you get. Because there is only one thing the devil, the devil is afraid of the word of God. When they came, to, if you look at this shortly, when they came to Jesus Christ to come for there was only one thing Jesus used against the against the is the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. He came against Jesus Christ several times, and every time he came, Jesus, he, he, he just used the word of God to bash him back. You are going to do the same thing for everything, every every temptation, every trial, every challenge, every problem that comes away. You will use the word of God to bash it back. But if you don't know the word of God, how can you use it? You can't do it because you don't know it. That means my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. They don't have knowledge. Do you know how, listen up, do you know how many people, how many Christians believe that when somebody dies, somebody dies young and everything, they go there and say, you know, God is God, is the Lord's doing. Is the Lord's doing? And the members on our side. God is that is God, God Lord this person. He decided to call him home. They call him home. Look at it. Death is an enemy. Let me, let me, show, let me show you. Let me show you this. Uh, for Corinthians. I mean, um, First Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? Verse 26. You see this one. Look at it. Death is an enemy. It's not a friend. 1526. Are you there? Look at it. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Do you know that premature death is not of God? Premature that is, uh, there, there is no person on earth, in heaven, anywhere, in, among the angels, nobody has been slandered the way God has been slandered. Sland, it's only called slander. If God, want, if God can sue, sue people for the damage of character, people, he, he will have sued the world. People say things against God every day and thinking that, oh, you know, we submit to a so many will. It's only the will of God to kill him. Someone dies young, he says, it's only will. A baby dies, he says, it's only will of God. A young man dies, or a young woman dies, and the family, the children, they are. He, he, see, the death is an enemy. The behind premature death is the devil. He has he has come to steal, to kill, to kill. God he didn't come to kill. Satan has come to steal when the enemy steals your money. It's, it's God, not God, that stole it. It's, it's Satan that stole it. When he has come to steal, to kill and destroy. People blame God. They blame God for what the devil is doing. I don't know if you've been to a funeral recently. You go to a funeral, you go to maybe they are doing a funeral somewhere. Go somebody die, you go and get the person. And you see people who gather there and see him. Take out. You know, you know, this is how God will it. You know, have you heard about that? You have heard, heard, heard it before? This is how God will it. That, you know, we're going to question God. It's God. And I'm only, who kind of God is that? Not my own God, maybe their own God. You see what I'm saying now? See what kind of God are you talking about? You see, you defame the character of God. You, you damage his character. So the devil is allowed to go scot free, and God is blamed. What devil is doing? Some say, eh, well, even though but God allow is, is God allowed the thing? God allowed the thing. God allow what? You know the Bible say, I set before you life and death. Choose life. That is amazing. Is it even giving you say, choose life, not choose death? 
Then you on your own go and choose death and say, it's God that will it. See, everybody's got, we all what we call moral agents. You can choose to follow God, you can choose to reject Him. If I want to be, as a pastor, as a pastor now, I can be doing, I can be getting involved with some crazy things, but shady deeds. If I want to do it, nobody's going to stop me. But when I get the consequence of it, I cannot, I cannot blame God. You see, the, 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 Bible, the Bible says a foolish man uses his own hand to cause problem, and then he blames God. He's hard first at first, first at the Lord. He's blaming God for it. You see, there is nothing that happens that just happens by chance. It's either you play into Satan's hands because you are foolish and ignorant, and the enemy using ignorance against Christians. The big one of the biggest problems in the church is ignorance. See, Bible says, don't be. Let, 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 let me show you some of Corinthians. Tell me that chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 11. So, let me read that 2, verse 11. Okay? Tell me that 2, 11. He said, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan is taking advantage of Christians because they're ignorant. Give me that in other versions. Give me that, give me that version of that one. Give me, that, give me uh, NLT or, GN, or, G, or GNT. Okay? Let's give me that good. He says, so that Satan will not outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. Now, this is not power. You see, somebody, you know, my daughter said, my mother-in-law, one night she came around and was saying that, ah, this devil is very powerful. The devil is very powerful. Because the way they talk about the devil to my mother-in-law, they say everything says devil. It's devil. Ah! He now said this devil get power. You <laughs> see what I said? What do I say? See this devil get power. Because see, as far as concerned, if 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 they say he's doing all these things, then it's so very powerful. But you see, the Jesus Christ made a public spectacle of it. Look at Philippians. Philippi. And you, I will, I will come back here. His schemes, his, his schemes, evil plans. Go to Philippians. I'm going to do something here. This is devil get power away. Ah! Devil get power. I was thinking, I said, my man, devil doesn't get power. He's, he's a defeated fool. He's defeated. You just defeated him. You see? Eh? But what is it that they say he's doing? What, what, what about this that they say that devil is doing? Take get power away. I said, the problem is ignorance. What we don't know is killing you. We don't know is killing you. Listen why listen, listen now. The reason why people don't come to hear the word of God is that they don't know the value of the word of God. If they are doing seminar for money, for making money, who will go there? But if they are doing seminar for uh, Bible understanding the word of God about financial prosperity, you don't know. No be church. Not church. Forget that. No be church. <laughs> Let's forget that one. Let's go to see because they have no understanding of the significance of the word. Ignorance. Philippians 2. Look at now. Oh, uh, look at verse uh, verse nine. That's going to show. Now he said, he said, uh, he said uh, there, therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Look at it now. One name. That's the name of Jesus Christ. That at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every name. Of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the Lord God Father. Now, put your finger there. At the name of Jesus, poverty bows. At the name of Jesus Christ, sickness and disease bow. At the name of Jesus Christ, sin that seems to hold you bound, the bow. At the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to Colossians. Now look at it. Let's go to Colossians. This is very important. Colossians 215. Want to go? Having what? Desire what? Principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, traveling over them in it. Give me amplified or an entity. This is what Jesus did for you. This is what Jesus said to Satan. That they say is very powerful. 
Huh? Having disarm, you know what to disarm somebody? Have you seen uh, people that are carrying big, big guns, uh, AK-47, and all these things? You disarm them, you remove their uniform, strip them naked, and then begin to drag them along the road. No more power. Ha God disarmed the principalities and powers that were arranged against us and made the bold display and public example in Josh said and shake it. Huh? Look at it now. He said, I will arrange against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in in and in in in, in in him and in the cross. In it, in it, the cross. This is what Jesus Christ did to, to, to Satan. Before Jesus Christ came, he had all the powers. He was in charge. He was calling the show anywhere. He was in charge. But when Jesus came and took away his power. And then he just took away his power, took away. He gave us the power. Now you are carrying the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you aware of that? Are you aware of that? Say, I'm a mobile container, a mobile container. Of, the of the Holy Spirit. Say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Say, I am of God. First John 4 4. Give me first John 4 4. I am of God. I have overcome the wicked one. Because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. But you belong to God. Give me, yes, you are of God, little children. And I overcome them. Who are the them? Talking about Satan, which is part of these powers, rulers of darkness. You have overcome them. Why? 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 Because, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. That's Satan. That's Satan. Choy, this is our heritage. This is how me I used to live in this, here in Abuja. Victorious. More than conqueror. That's how that, that what God expects. God expects us to live. See, but the thing, what has the enemy done? Satan has, has distracted us, has deceived us. So that we are trying to fight imaginary battle with imaginary people. Somebody's behind this matter. But it's, on, it's on the village, you. It's on the village. Now from village, they do they do that, you know. So they are from village. So, and usually most people that blame are villagers. The villagers are blamed for most of the things. Meanwhile, the same village you, where you grew up, I don't know where you were born, if they gave back to you, they didn't, they didn't kill you when you were a child. It's not the one to kill you. For the village. See, the, the enemy is using lies to trick Christians. Go back to the second where were they just now? Uh, so we just have to, uh, 2 verse 11. Uh, 2 11, where were they? See, smartness. 2 11. We don't know the truth, and if we don't know the truth, it will not, that, that we can't be free. So you have chapter 2 verse 11. And then we go to, we go to John 8. Look at it. 2 Corinthians. No, 2 Corinthians. I said 2 Corinthians. They are with it just now. 2 Corinthians. 2 11. Smart. Device of the Satan's device, devices. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Satan's, Satan's device. Look at it. We are with it just now. Quick. Let Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his device. This, this taking advantage of somebody. Have you ever, have you, has somebody ever taken advantage of you? Did people take advantage of you because you are ignorant? Are you ignorant now? People, people have collected money from me before. They took money from me. They didn't put the money in my, in my pocket. They talked me into putting out money and then I parted my money. And it's, and it's a lie. It was a lie. They deceived me. My money is gone. See, the, this is the way the enemy takes advantage of Christians. Have you ever been taken advantage of somebody, maybe as a lady from example, somebody promised to marry you? Promised to marry you, and then he took advantage of you sexually. When I was Sarah's boy, I did that. Even when I was married with children, I was still looking like a boy, wear jeans. I said, I was single. And I was getting married to you and everything, thinking of getting married. Talk about marriage. Wow, that's right, that's right. Talk about marriage. Talk about marriage. Oh, I never dug any that had any wife anywhere. You know how many people in Abuja here deal with children in Lagos? 
How many men have children in Lagos? They are children, family. They are thinking of the family steady in Lagos. And they are here, and nobody's thinking that he's going to marry me. He's promised he's going to marry me. God is taking advantage of the devil. Satan is taking advantage of them. See, I'm trying to make a point to this one. If I can get it to you, I'll be, I'll be, too, I'll be too glad. To understand that the devil does not use raw power. You see, he didn't, those, when I was, those girls, girls were sleeping with me, you know, you know that they were sleeping with me because they, I forced them, I took them and raped them. I didn't rape them. No. They removed all their bodies by themselves. Because the idea is that they are thinking that this man might marry me. And if, I, if you go marry me, why not can't I sleep with like if, if I don't sleep with me, maybe somebody, go, maybe somebody else. So they are ignorant of the word of God, and the enemy will use them to take advantage of them. And then one of them, one of them in Abuja here, yeah, those days Abuja was still like a village. When they discovered that I was already had, I already had the family, and then they discovered that I was young pregnant one time, they were pregnant at that time. I'd lie. I still I lied. Okay? What one I said was a mistake. The other that <laughs> she, she, she hooked me with pregnancy. She, she was pregnant to hook me. I said, I'm not, I'm not going to marry her. She's going to marry her. See, uh, see, the thing is that that's the enemy's method, method of operation. It's lies. Lies. You go to a lady today, you tell her, you know, this, I mean, I'm so, I'm, I'm so much, I'm crazy for you. I love you and everything. I can't, I mean, I can't just stand it. All these other ladies, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. And then, oh, she's smiling, she's smiling. She's taking advantage of you. All you want is just to have sex with her. You finish with her, go to the next one. Because on, you see, as long as we are here on earth, the enemy is ruling the whole world with deception. With deception. People who, who left this morning and went to mosque to pray, the devil didn't pull up on their neck to drive them there. No, they were, they were deceived there. He thought that he's, by knocking head on the ground five times, they go to heaven. <laughs> I said, no, that's, 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 he said, they believe in lie. You see, it, check any area of life, and you see that that's the Satan's method of operation. It's deception. That's why you see, it's not, you see, there are thoughts that can come to your mind that are that they are worse than terror to snakes. They are thoughts. They look at like ordinary thoughts, but those thoughts can, if you believe them, they can destroy you. There are no innocent thoughts in the name of the spirit. If it, is that like your thought is coming from God or from the devil? If it's from the devil, it's a deleter, and that's why you did to say, well, you look at the, the Corinthians now. Those thoughts are not ordinary thoughts. See, the word device, don't be device here. It, the ordinary definition of device means thoughts, thoughts, device, means thoughts. Don't be, don't be unaware or ignorant of his devices. The word device is interpreted, the word device is as thoughts. There are thoughts that are coming to your mind, that comes to your mind, that can make you change your countenance and you start crying. There are thoughts that you can get and then look at your wife and begin to beat your wife. Just thoughts. It's thoughts. The, the power is in deception. It's in thoughts. And see, people, it's taking advantage of people through their thoughts. Somebody comes in and says, proposal to you. I have this, this opportunity. I got about 10 vehicles in the, in the papa, papa. I need to clear them. I mean, just give me some money to clear. Just, I mean, if I clear it, I give, I give you one, one, one free. I need money and I'm broke. I don't have any money. I have 10 vehicles. They are there. I need to pictures. They are there in the world. I just, I just need money. Okay. One is yours. See, what I'm going to see is, is selling, the devil is selling a lie to you. He's sending your life now. And he's seeing whether you're going to buy it. He doesn't even go to your bank account to remove your money. No, no, no. It's lies. Thoughts. Thoughts. They will give you, they, they will tell you this opportunity. This opportunity to make it. You know, go to back, your account and remove your money. And give the man. And the phone cannot be reached. It's phone cannot be reached. You call the president, this line cannot be reached. It's sweet off. The man throw away the thing, I'm going to get another SIM card. <laughs> you see, he didn't even force you. He definitely didn't use his raw power against you. What is lies? 
It's nice. I was, I remember, I was sharing, but one, one, one lady, one of our students, he does this. He, 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 he mean, the devil deceived her because she, here is somebody who was going to get, somebody was going to marry her. They already going to meet somebody. And before he knew, another person deceived her. She, because of that one, she forfeited the person who truly loved her and wanted to marry her. You know what I'm saying? It's happening almost all, every, all the time. People, the only, when you are going the right direction, listen now, you are going the right direction, the enemy will make sure that he turns you this way. He doesn't use force. He's the master of the game of deception. That guy is, is, too, is too good in the deceivable. He's, that's where devil is extremely good. He doesn't, he, he, he is so smart at it. And there was somebody, one guy that came from one of our students, old students, in our former church. Was, we were teaching that in those days, teaching that guy. He came around and said the father left inheritance for him. Wrote certificate. The one that printed certificate, certificate. Inheritance. They so much money, and they have this, all this, uh, like this cost something. They have the money that the father left behind everything, and came around. As he was telling me that story, see, the Holy Spirit, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, you tell this lie, it's lying. This boy came helplessly as you. This is it. That even I mean, I he say you are a guy. You are not trust me. You trust me before. So I mean, this whatever you can do, with this one is yours. All I need is just some money to so 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 so. But I'm a friend. I say, I say, look, I say, look. You know, I was a four one man myself. You retire four one man. I will do four one for women. I said, this it can't work. I was able to, un to uncover it. Why? Because of the word. You see? And everyone was there, we have been tricked by the devil. Because it's good at it. You have been tricked by Satan. You don't repair your motor. Huh? Mechanic. See, this is. There, we are, our generator, my, my brother came from there to come here. You are here today. The generator was making some, this thing was needed to be overhauled, overhauling. Somebody brought a bill of about 91,000 huh? to overhaul it. And then my brother came up, I said, I just, see the things, and he said, I should bring the money now. See, he's only forcing me to bring the money out. He said, no, he just said, this, you get it, you go there and get this one, thing. this one, you have to go to a beggar. They get, you get this material, this particular type of beggar and everything. People are not fooling. But when you listen to the spirit there, Lie, lie, lie. <laughs> okay? So just say, no problem. Don't worry about it. He said, I said, I said, no, 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 if you have to do it now, this is the last time. If you don't do it, now it's the nature. Of it. <laughs> okay? So there's no problem. And I call my brother and say, right, my, my brother here is here today. And I call him and say, this is this, 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 this. There's no problem. Can you just come? Came in with just small amount, tiny amount. I don't know about what he brought. What he brought was 9,000. 9,000 naira. 9,000 naira was the friend he bought. And then he bought, I need 4,000 naira something. That's what, uh, maybe 6,000. The, the, the thing was that they were even there. That were, that, that didn't, uh, uh, including the, maybe it's a filter, all that is like, you know, all the whole thing, I don't think it's up to maybe 20,000. It's less than that. Well, less than, less than that. And somebody's asking for 91,000. And, that, and, for, and that's the beginning, you know, just to begin. Because when, when I start it, I don't know whether there are other issues. <laughs> See what I'm saying now? Well, see, what happens is the lies, you know, it comes to the CIA, you know, they might get some food, some food in the house. Ah, I'll go. I'll go. So, 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 so the, the, the point is that the, the, see, the enemy uses lies. And if you are ignorant of his devices, you take advantage of you. I shared with you before. Lady, uh, it's a married person. I, I, you see me crying for a lady. I want to have sex. <laughs> I want you to love you. 
But I saw you also, also mesmerized. Look at your shape. Oh, no. It's only about crocodile tears. It's a lie. And you know, when the enemy is coming against you as a woman, you know that there is something good coming to you. There is something good about to come to you, and the enemy is trying to steal from you. That's why you see, you see, let Satan should take advantage of us, but we are not ignorant of his devices. It is the biggest part of it now, church. This morning, this message, to, my summary of this message is in the last part here. People are ignorant of his devices, and as long as we are ignorant of his devices, listen now. What are some of his devices? Let me give you one example. His devices is that when he says, when it's time for church, and he says, don't come here. Do not come to Eagle Christian Center today. Let's go to a church of deliverance service ministry international. Where you can drink oil. You drink oil and your belly is big. Then the witches you die one by one in the village. Witches die one. You see, see, that is this device. It's a device to say, do not come to where you can hear the truth about the devil. You go to churches that preaches fear. Fear of the devil. Fear of the devil. See, there are two extremes. Number one, there are people who don't, who don't even think that there's a devil. They don't know that there's a devil. They don't believe there's any devil. The devil is destroying them and ruining their lives. Because they are ignorant. Then there are people, another extreme, who know that there's a devil. But they believe so much in the devil's power that the God's power has been reduced to nothing. And they talk about devil, 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 devil. They see devil in every door knob. They see devil on the on the on the, on the, on the when they burn flags in the night. They say evil, evil, evil bed, evil bed, evil bed, evil bed. And then they start with no night VG and now puppet for night VG. And then they say, sleeping. You see, they are trying to fight the devil by some kind of power. You know, they can't sleep, but they must not sleep. Die, 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 die. It's extreme. It has been difficult. What we are dealing with is the devices. And it's one of the devices to, to push you to a wrong place. If you can push the wrong place, then you are shadow boxing. You are beating the air. You can't get your miracle. Your miracle gets farther away from you, and then you, you are sinking deeper and deeper into Satan's hands. See, look at this example here. Let's go to uh, 7 Corinthians chapter 4. Devices. Chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. Okay? We're looking at these devices. Look at how it, do, how it is with unbelievers. That's what, since, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame and not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look at verse 3. Very important. 3 and 4. Very important. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Whose mind, look at this now, whose mind the God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe, lest the, they don't believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. That three and four is very significant. The reason why people go to hell every day, listen now. The reason why people go to hell every day is not because of the bad things they did. We have all done bad things. The reason why people go to hell every day is because they have rejected Jesus. There are many people who are in church who are, who they, they are just church goers, but they have not accepted Jesus. They have rejected him. Look at it. This is it. Look at give me give me another version of that one. If a gospel is there, BB, BB, or you know, give me BB or any of these uh, new versions. Okay? The gospel is there. 
The enemy is using lies, lying thoughts to deceive people. If the good news we preach is hidden behind the veil, are you going to say this morning? Eh? What to go? What to go? What to go? If the good news preached preach is hidden behind the veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. They don't know it. That's why they go to mosque. That's why they go to mosque. That's why some people say, some people say, you know what? We are all having the same God. It's just we have different, different religions. It's the same God we are all having. We are serving the same God. That's a lie. That's deception. Not the same God. Only one God. There's only one God. And His Son is Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I died for you, you go to hell. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter how kind you are. Doesn't matter how, how, how much you have done, 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 all the good you have done in life. No, 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 no. You see here, His gospel is veiled, is covered, is hidden. So, the, what does it mean? The, this scripture means the whole world is ruled by the devil. How does he rule them? He ruled them through deception. About first John, uh, give me a second, give me first John. He said, he, he, said, he said the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. First John 2. It's under the sway, under the control of the wicked one. First John 5 19. Give me first John 5 19. Quick. Hmm? We know that we are of God. Look at it. 5 19. Give me 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies on the sway of the wicked ones. So give me 18 and 19 together. We are of God. Where are you? You want to wake up in the morning at home and say, I am of God. Say it now. Say, I am of God. I am of God. Praise God. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Now, see, what, is, what does it mean that he does not sin? He doesn't make practice of sinning. We all mess up, mess up before. But we don't make a practice of sinning. And when you stay in sin and you justify it, see, you can, there, 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 there are people who are, who are there are two people. One, two of you are struggling with the same sin. Listen now. The same sin. One does the sin and feels bad about it. Huh? He commits his feels bad about it. The other one, sin. So it was no big deal. It's cool. You see the difference now? The two of them are struggling with it, but this one is, is this one is, makes a practice of sin. But the one who has known God, even though he has struggled, he has struggled, struggled with some, some habits in his life, trying to overcome some sins. Listen now. After I go back again, I was, I was still looking at women, trying to check, you know. I was still looking at women. But then, I was, it was, it was not, like, not like before, when I was looking up to, ins, like a pig inside it. It's a different thing entirely. When there is a change of heart, you begin, your inside has changed. When you are hearing the word of God, then you begin to, you see, you, you may be living like a kind of Christian, but your life is changed, and you are—it's a struggle. You look at that. Look at that now. Look at it now. And then, but here, but is it, so what sin does? Sin opens the door for the enemy to attack you. Huh? Sin, sin is an open door. Is it? If you leave this church and I mess up now, does it? God doesn't stop to withdraw His love for you. Are you aware of that? There is nothing you can do for God to stop loving you. Tell the people, tell the people. But your love for God can, can go down. That means your love for God, God's love for you is permanent. But you can withdraw from Him. You have the power to withdraw from God if you want to. So what sin does, listen now, this is what sin does. Sin only, sin opens the door for your enemy to attack you. It can attack you with sickness. It can attack you with financial problems. It can attack you with mature death. 
Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter you're not a Christian, you only that you die young. Because you know, so sin is a is a is a major problem because number one, hear me, as far as God is concerned, nothing that you can do that can make God to withdraw you cannot you cannot do everything to please God and say, God, nah, come and love me now. He has already loved you. Even before you were born again, God's love already on you. He has loved you. He does like, I say, for God so loved the world that he gave his love because he said, even when you were a sinner, he loved you. How much more that you're a child of God? So he loves you unconditionally. But the problem is that if you live in sin and you remain in sin and God is giving you the strength and the grace of God and you refuse, it opens the door for your enemy to attack. You're looking for a crack. He's looking for a crack against you. A crack. Okay? So, hear me say, he said, everybody who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. So, you see, when you do that, when you keep yourself, what the what happens, the wicked one finds it difficult to touch you. Huh? For instance, I leave this place, I leave this place, and I, and I go and sleep with a the woman. There's not my girlfriend. And there's not my, there's not my wife. Huh? I carry a woman, I go and sleep with her. Huh? And I say, I'm, I'm covered with the blood. Huh? I saw God is concerned. You see, he lost me. Does not stop him alone? No. That's why I'm, 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 I'm saying, God still lost me. But what I, what, you know what I did? I went to where, snake is, where the snake is lying and I put my inside the hole. Huh? Che, 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 che. The snake was inside his hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go there. Are you, are you going to get what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So, the thing is that, so, I, I, if I come back, I say, God, she didn't don't bite me. Oh, help me. God, do you know what, what, what God do? Tell me now. Oh, what will you do? Huh? Ah, I see now. You see, if, if, if God was a human being, nobody would live again. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see, if I come back to God after I messed up, you know what God, God will, know, he will forgive, he will forgive me. He will forgive me. He is so compassionate to forgive me. Now, if his woman says, let me send it there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now? That's what I'm saying. But God will forgive you. Forgive me. If I go down and say, Father, look at what I just done. He'll forgive me. And I say, and, and what is this? The compassion of God is too heavy. He wants to come closer to him and say, Can you say, you know, this thing that is, this sin that is messing you up, I can help you. If you're close, if you're close to me, I can help you. And then you mess up again. And then you come back. You mess up. And then you come back. If you don't take it serious and you become comfortable in sin, listen now, you know what it does? It begins to deaden your conscience. Your conscience towards God. Because, see, so you are no longer hearing God because now sin is taking part. Your conscience is dead now. You cannot hear when God says, Good, that person will give you, will, will you contract. Good, you cannot hear God in your life. So you now enter to go one place and die. They say, but why? Why me? Why? They refuse to blame God. But it's not God's fault. It's because we refuse to listen to him. And that doesn't talk about loving him. You've got to say now. People have come to me for counsel before and they have a problem with this sense and everything. And they say, they say no, I don't know. I'm struggling. They say, I say, once you finish it, wear your palm and say, Father, look at what I've just done. I sin against you. And then what you need to do is now, now get the word. Now get the word of God. Begin to speak the word of God. See, I sin shall not have dominion over me. I have victory over sin. I'm, I'm, I have victory over this smoking. I have victory over this illicit sex. I refuse to be a slave to sin. I'm a slave to righteousness. And you are speaking the word of God in faith. A times come that sin that used to mess you up before. All of a sudden you look at it and then you pass. See, one of my when I when I got born again in my office, a very very time of service. My, 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 one of my superiors, he became, my, he became chief executive. Now listen, when I go up on again, he had a dream. He had a dream. He didn't even know I was already born again. But he had a dream and saw me. We normally go on tour together on this tour, go, go on nationwide tour. So we, we were together in that dream. And then he saw a beautiful lady, beautiful lady, you know, everywhere, shape, everything open. And I said, he, he said, he was looking at the woman. He said, but when I came there, I just look at, I just pass. He said, no, no. He said, he look at himself. He said, what is he doing? Look at, let's look at who's like, 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 who's like
He never could understand how could I, that the, the dream was opposed to him. So when they came to the office the following day, I said, look, I told him I said I'm born again now. I'm a child of God. He said, no wonder. He said he had a dream, I had a dream about you and myself. I said when they placed the garden, and then there was this lady that was such a paragon and a beautiful lady and everything, and the lady was standing, and then they were all walking, look at, look at the woman, they were lost. All of them were looking at the woman. He said, but when I came there, I just passed. He said, hey, not all. I hope people. He said, she shot it to him. Because he knew that whenever they are left, I will I would never drive with the woman. Before. There was a strength inside to overcome it. The strength comes in the inside as you spend time on the world. But if the devil can push you away from where you are hearing the word of God, you are unable to do your devotion, your morning devotion, you are no longer as consistent with your work with God, then you become weak. You become weak to watch anything on television. Anything on television, you can watch anything, no matter how pornographic it looks like. You can because it becomes more appealing. Sin becomes more appealing. Why? Because now you are weaker in the inside. It's weakness in the inside. See that there are, there are things you know go running, you don't know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Don't, do this, don't, do this, don't call that person. Don't call that person. No, no, no. This is that this is, there are some numbers you delete. In fact, some people change their change their SIM card. Because of the contract that you already, you already made. Change the SIM card. Because the reason is, the reason is because now hear me, the devil will push you. He's very gentle. The devil can wait for you for, for three years. To kill you. If it's too slow, if you if you know that you are still, you will say six years. There's no, see, as long as you die, at the end of the day, it's okay. <laughs> so the thing is that you have to, what, what you are supposed to do now is to keep him waiting forever. Let's keep the devil waiting forever. See, look at, look, see it now, see it. Yeah. The wicked one touches him now. You are about the whole lesson. Look at, look at uh, second, second Timothy chapter, chapter, chapter 10. Verse, uh, verse 3 to 5. Okay? That's uh, the, 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 the series. I'm reading, okay? See, see it, uh, uh, second chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. Let's do, let's do three to five. Okay? You see quickly here. For don't walk in the flesh, do not war according to the flesh. But what, 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 see, that's, it's not a fleshly battle. I tell you, I say, we are not waging a fleshly battle. Okay? It's not the fault of the girl that came to you to come and tell you. It's not a fault. It's not a fault. It's not a fault. It wasn't my fault when I want to touch women. I was going to marry them. I was under Satan's control. I was under Satan's control. It wasn't my fault. It's the devil's arranging to destroy. Say that again. Look at it now. Say, it's not, it's not a flesh, but don't fight people. He said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Thoughts. Thoughts. Go on. Casting down arguments. Argument, where is the argument? The mind. Arguments in the mind, there are arguments are ideas that come from human beings, ideas and suggestions that come from other people that is against the world. Arguments that say that, you know, you can't jump in like that without a man. I can't a man who is without a man. You know, you, say, you, know, you are not having regular sex, you look old. Oh, you are a space star, you never get husband now. What are, what are, there's nothing wrong with you just keeping your boyfriend watching the wire and everything, just to, you know, just to, just to keep you some kind of, uh, keep, the, keep the flow of your life. See, these are these are arguments. You get what I'm saying? These are arguments. I I, I remember when I used to, when, when I used to toast toast women. I used to toast them. Christians, born again Christians, and I had to look like Christian. I had to blend like them, so I can I, I can I, I could appeal to them. Use of Christian jingoism, you know, glory, hallelujah, glory, you know, those, those kind of Christians. So they are <laughs> the idol causing arguments and every high thing that exhausts is the glory of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the grace of Christ. Every thought that is against the Bible must be brought down. Yeah. Every thought. Every thought that says you will be broken, that yeah, yeah, that you can't make it, that we are, yeah, that's a thought from hell. Any thought that says you will not get money in the city, it's from hell. Why? Why won't you be rich? You are a child of God and you are, you are hearing the word of God. See, do you know that? Listen, listen. Just stay under the word of God and begin to prosper you. 
Just you bring yourself under the anointing, the atmosphere, the atmosphere here, the anointed atmosphere because you honor God and respect God and come and stay in his presence. God begin to rearrange this invisible places for you. Are you aware of that? So I, will, I will listen to the story. Uh, it was in the story of my, 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 my children. Uh, James Ave, James Ave, James Ave was, he was teaching about what happened to him. He was traveling. He was traveling to a city in the U.S. And on the road, they had, uh, I think, they, they are two, 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 two stories, two, two stories. Number one is that uh, he was driving with a tire that was looked like tube. His motor was, his tire was so bad, so terrible, that it looked like tube. <laughs> and he was driving, as he was driving, he said, he even said, he cracked a joke, he said, you could, you could see the air, inside the tire, you could see the air, inside the tire. The tire was so thin. And he was taking his driving his family, family, family with that kind of tire. And then, you know, just believing God, just trusting God. And knowing that, he, see, faith gets the job done. No matter how tight things are, once you begin to have faith in God, it's a, it's a done. The God will come through for you. So he, he was driving that vehicle and all of a sudden, there was a tire truck that passed. A tire, a firestone tire, firestone tire. It, they, they built their big, big truck with plenty of tires inside it, and they didn't drove past. And they didn't drove past. He saw two tires rolling on the road. Huh? Listen now. I have not heard the story yet. Those two tires were rolling on the road, and they were following each other on the road, on the road. And they went together on the road, and then went to where Jesus had passed Jesus had place as he was driving, and went and and those, those two tires went and lay by the side of the of the, of the grass. So he parked his vehicle. He said, "What is this one?" He could do the tire side of the motor, and then went to the to the next town and called them. See, he didn't just say, "This one, I, I God will give me." <laughs> See, this one is over there, and don't make us up. He went and called them there and said, I saw two tires on the road. Your truck just passed now. Two tires were on the road. Please check the number of tires we have. Did, did you, do you have any missing tire? They said, there's no missing tire. They've checked, no missing tire. They now called out of, out of the out of office again. He didn't want to say, I, want, I don't want to just carry see tire like this. I just pick it. That is still there stealing. He now went out of, called out of the office and said, please, I want to cross check. There was a truck that passed by the road, and this guy was left said, they have kind of tires, the tires are intact. How that tire came about, they don't know it. So the person said, look, my, my friend, if you want a tire, take them. We don't, we don't have any missing tire. If you have a need for it, use it, go and use it. I give, the, the person said, take it. Because no, all, the, all the tires are complete. That's why he put it two tires in his car. Two brand new tires. That matter was taken care of. Now that's God's supernatural provision. Because other God might not tired of the door or the tired just like the loaf of bread. Only God knew what happened. But he said that was a small thing compared to what God did when he was also traveling with his family in the night. I was traveling with the family in the night, and then while two a.m. Uh, two a.m. Uh, in the night. Two a.m. in the night because he has to go during the, you know, they're like, like about Okanagan. Normally travel in the night because of the stars are bad. Normally travel in the night. So there's no, it's not hot. He's in the, in the middle of the night around 2 a.m. The devil came out against his, against his vehicle. I don't, something came under, under the vehicle, his vehicle. He rammed his vehicle on something and then for the boo, 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 boo. And then it came, destroyed the, burst the, 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 the tank, the car tank. And he saw the fuel gauge went from a full to a zero. All the fuel, he said, watch all his fuel like this, everything discharged on the ground. At yeah, 2 a.m. in the night. And the wife was sleeping, the children was sleeping at the back. He said, What was it? What happened? What happened? Maybe, some, maybe, some, maybe I ran to something. He said, But don't worry, you're going to sleep. He, stood, he came out of the car with the stock light at night, 2 a.m. in the night. So he had to stay, he didn't stay by the road because of the because of danger. So he had to stay by his car using, using to see, to see whether there's any, any vehicle passing. And then 2 a.m. in the night. And at 2 a.m. in the night, after some time, he saw. A, a pickup, a pickup vehicle was coming, so light, and then was doing like this. Then the, the pickup drove and parked, and then a man came out and said, what do, what do you want? What is the problem? He said, my, I have a problem with my, my vehicle. The, the, all the, the tank, just, I ran to his phone, he said, the tank just flipped. He said, that, he said that, that, that's what I'm here. I said, that, 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 that's what I'm here for. He didn't understand what he was saying. He said, that's what, that, that's what I'm here for. 
They might not have, they might not have brought his, the truck, the, the pick up in, in front of his car and then use his chain to jack, jack his motor. Jack, jack on two motor and then throw it, it down. And then throw it to the, to the town. When they got to town, that made two of the night. They got to, they got to, got to town and then he went to a petrol station. That, 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 and then, and then use, is there a different and removes a key in his pocket and use the key and then the, 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 the place open. Then he went to the place that they do service in. The place open, and then that drove the car, the, 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 the man inside, the, the motor, the man's motor, put it inside, inside the place, and then went under it, fixed the, the tank. The tank totally repaired, everything repaired. Then he now drove that same, he now, he now brought that, that vehicle back to the petrol station. The same petrol station, because that was that place, the petrol station, the surface area. He put it, and then, and then he removed the nozzle, or the, or the petrol, or the, or the, or the, or the, or the and put fuel and fill it. Two hours in the night. Fill it and covered it, and then that's it. Say, thank you, sir. Ah, thank you, sir. I watched your name. So, what, 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 I want to show this man kindness. The man who has been so nice to me, I want to show him kindness. So he drove to that place and go to the petrol station. Some days after, discovered that the petrol station was not working. Had been shut down for years. So he now asked the neighbor. He saw. He saw. He called that day. He saw. A, he saw a coffee. A coffee. This a, a cafe where they sell uh, the, the tea and coffee. So now what? I said, "Excuse me, where is the owner of that person? He, the man helped me some days. Some days back. I want to see him to thank him." He said, "Which man?" He said, the man was the person. He said, he said no, there's no, this thing has been shut closed for years. Nobody, no foil inside, nothing inside. He said, no, it cannot be. He goes, I get the man. He said, no, I said, I said, but I'm here. I said, this thing has been shut for years. So he said, so how come? See, he was living because he didn't know, he didn't know that God was an angel. He never was an angel. He didn't know it was an angel. So he now, he, 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 he now began to say, how could this place have been closed? And he saw everywhere shut. Nothing, no sign of any life there. See, but this is the place. Yeah, this is the place. But you know, this place is closed. Nobody, nobody uses it. Nobody, nobody. If I now it's like, like what is this? So it's like a story. How can anybody help you? This place has been closed for years. So we now ask God, what is what happened? Go now. If you want to show the scripture, say, I, I share with you. I said you will entertain angels unaware. I didn't say my word. You can entertain angels unaware. So what happened that day was an angel that was sent. Just like what happened to Peter in the, in the prison. is when God sent an angel to take care of his son. You see, you see, if God can do that, what is one millionaire? What is, like, what is it that you need that God cannot do? He said, but the enemy will do everything to let you know that you can't make it in Nigeria. Just like I was talking about that, the global economy meltdown, the, the, the pressure that people are facing all over the world. Is making people to, to, to think that they can't make it. Some people think the only way they can make it, maybe if I do extra work, if I work in the night, if I take night work, and maybe you take a job contract and you work throughout the whole night, and then you travel to some place again and go and do other work there for, you work there for 10 days, for 15 days, for, for one, one month and stop church, then I will make it. That's, this, those are arguments of hell. It is the blessings of the Lord that make us rich and does not ask you. So you must learn to cast down those arguments and say, you can't make it. How much your salary? How can you get the money to buy the motor? It's not about how much you are earning. It's about the God you serve. I can't explain how four American universities gave us some scholarship. I can't explain it. It's beyond any comprehension on how four universities are giving their Americans are retired that can just put money anyhow like that. For them to give lots of money and say, come and study here. This is the money we are giving you. I even lobby him to come. Mother God. It's not human effort. It's not human capability. See, look, 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 it got, I was, it was also sharing, I think Jennifer was also sharing, it was that, that's the same thing. He said one time, I don't know, I, I didn't hear that one very well. It was talking about it. Somebody was, I don't know, they collect offerings, offering one church, and then I don't know, they put money in the pocket, and they went, came and threw the, threw the, threw the bucket away, and threw the money away to, to neighborhood. 
So when they woke up in the morning, following the morning, following the morning, they were saying money, money, they are never, they are picking money, all the dollars, twenty dollars, they are picking money, they are never, you make people all the money from heaven. They don't know how it happened. You woke up and see money. See, God doesn't manufacture money in heaven, but there's money here that He can redistribute. He can redistribute money into your hand. But if you don't change your mindset and you think that this is your little job or your little contract that can make it to be financially prosperous, you are missing it. You are missing it. How much contract will you get? It's God that can make a contract for you and give you a big contract that you will, the, the, the profit you are going to get out of that contract will be so huge. And yet, little labor is put inside. But as long as you are trusting in yourself, you don't understand how much of this Bible, how much this work can help you. There is nothing you are looking for that is not in the Bible. Church, husband is here. Husband is in this Bible. Babies are here. Every money you will make here on earth is in this Bible. But if you go to somebody that tell them that the money you are supposed to make is in the Bible, yeah, they say, how, how come? They are ignorant. They don't have understanding of the word of God here. It is the word of God that is big enough to give you inheritance. To make you financially prosperous in the world. But you know what? Our mindset has to change. The mindset has to change. And the most difficult to do is to change your mindset. Because we all grew up with what we can see with our cuckoo eyes. Somebody say, come and see me. I will give you a job. Other person, a lot to say, come and see me. I will give you the word. Come, come to this church. I will give you the word of God. Other person say, I want to like you. Say, come and see me. I get a job. I get a contract for you. You say, Lotto. I'm sorry. I like you. Barao wants to give me contracts. So I can't get this one now. Okay? Let this one stay. Make I go do that one. And then my name will come out. You have missed it. What do you finish you? You miss it. You miss it. Because let me hear me. God can you're like what I'm going to give away. There's nothing that is too hard for God to do. If you say he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And he says, Every other thing shall be added to you. And you say, yes, that's what the Bible says, but I need money, and this one cannot give me the money, so I'm going to look for this one. You miss it. You are walking by sight. You know, you walk by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Church, it is a faith walk. You cannot sit down, listen now. You cannot sit down where you are now and calculate how you are going to build us in Abuja. Calculator. Calculator. How much salary? A month. 200,000 per month. Times 12. Huh? Times 12 months. That's one year now. Even if you no chop. <laughs> For that one year, no food. <laughs> because you are not eating anything. I know it happened. You know it happened. No, 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 how is it? Let me down the name. Throw away your calculator. Get the Bible. Replace the calculator with Bible. What I'm telling you, church, is not common. See, what is common is that this is the time you are going to get your miracle. Say amen ten times. Let it be loud. Come on. Let your throat cut. <laughs> That's not the thing. The solution is in the world. I'm talking about systematic, consistently staying with the world. He said, I give you power to get wealth. It's God who gives you power to get wealth. One of our colleagues in the U.S., his pastor in the U.S., came to the house last, last week. From the gate. When they entered the house, he said, wow. No wonder God is prospering you. 
the world. He said, enter from the, from the gate, from the gate is the word of God, the scriptures that you come again. When you are rolling the gate, you are seeing scriptures. You will enter the house, there is a message playing by the, by the gate house. Huh? You pass that one, enter the pal, enter my parlor, there are, you will not see my photograph at the first parlor. You will see, all you see is scripture, 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 scripture. So he said, he is, where he has been going, what he has been seeing is be photograph of the man of God. What, when you enter the house, the photograph of the man of God is smiling at you and you say, but what is, is the word? Is the word. And then he came into a house and found out that the word of God is playing even in the toilet. Wow. Wow. The word. We have reverence. Rest. Do, do, the way you love money. Do, do you respect money? Eh? That's how we respect, respect the word. If you see how many people respect money, even here in this church now. The respect the half of money is so strong that even when somebody calls you during service and say, Come and take your, you will say, Excuse me, Pastor. Even though you are preaching, I go answer call. I go answer call. The money. See, respect is for money. When you transfer that respect to the world of God, money begins to begin to chase you. The money will begin to chase you now. See, there are people who have respect for relations. Relations. Huh? My uncle, brother. My uncle, brother. He just come. No, no. He, I don't know. Come to me. He, I don't know. Go. You are one of your uncle. One day your uncle is dying of sickness and disease. And you need somebody who knows the world to speak over that sickness and disease. Church, you better be forearmed. You are, you are, you are um, ahead of time before the battle comes. If you are not armed um, before the battle comes, when the battle comes, your relations will go down. You cannot help them. All you do is go to them and cry with them. <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> you are a foolish person. Because what we are supposed to do is to lay hands on that person and say, Be healed. But the devil, if the devil can deceive you and you are not spending time on the world, you are not talking on the world, you are not hearing the world on a consistent basis, when the battle of life comes, how will you fight? When you are facing financial difficulty, when the enemy comes against your finances and everywhere seems block, you go there is block. That one is block. This other one is block. That one is block. What will you do? You know that you can be so financially uh, 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 challenged that even money to borrow can't get to borrow. You can be so things can be so difficult that even to borrow, you go there and say, "Oh God, even me to grab no level." <laughs> You go ask Nobody will borrow you. See, God will wait for you until you know that it's only God that can answer it. You see, as you show in that clip, it's not about you people coming to church to give us offering. Do you know how more God is doing in our life? He is building us on me and this home so that we can help people to know the to know things of God. So that you, when you know God very well, then you can lay us on your finances on your finances. The pastor, a pastor came to Abuja here to teach me. A pastor came to Abuja here to teach me the word of God. My life changed. When to my wife, I knew the pastor and took me there. And our life, our life changed to the day. If you the day you, this is now the day you begin to respect this Bible. The day you begin to respect, I'm not talking about respecting the Bible by putting it on your, on your pillow when you go to bed. And then the last one I'm saying, I say, Bible is Bible. You don't read it. That's what I'm saying now. Maybe I will dry witches. You put it there, you, 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 if there's any witch at all, the devil will oppress you more. It's not, the devil is not afraid of Bible on that pillow. No. He's afraid of a child of God that is a regular in church and opening the Bible and reading the Bible on a daily basis. The devil is scared of that kind of person. He knows that when the word of God is coming into you, 
is, is no deposit, no return. If you don't put deposit, if you don't deposit the word of God in your inside there, when you have a bill of sickness, bill of sickness, no, no way to pay. See, there are some things that we are, some sickness, the enemy will fight, listen now, the enemy will fight you through thoughts and feelings. Thoughts and feelings. These are the two that your thinking and your feeling, what you feel in your body, in your pocket, what you feel, the things you can see. Then they will bring those thoughts in your mind. Look at it now. Things are difficult. You are going to get money. Nobody will give you money. It will give you thoughts. And then you can feel pain in your body. And then when you feel pain in your body, say, this pain, no, you pain. You don't, you don't die inside. The liver don't cut. He is giving you lies, telling you lies here. So what do you do when you are not? If you have been taking the word of God ahead of time, you just begin to laugh. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, pay you leave. The Bible says by his strength and fear. The Bible says Jesus himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. Because he bore my sin and disease, therefore I am free. I refuse to bear what Jesus Christ bore. I know my right. You know, devil. I also know that you are defeated. Get out. But if you don't know that before, oh, oh God, doctor, no, see, they pay now here. You are not prepared for battle. See, there's a reason why we are here to equip you. God brought us up in this place to equip you and the saints. And so, if you are, if you are, if you didn't come this morning, you know you have to have, you have, you have. Hear me, church. It's good to walk. Walk is good. It's very good. You are walking, not walking for a living. You walk so that you can have enough to give. Then God will give open financial door for you. If you trust your work to prosper you, you are fool. If you trust in your work, if you trust in your toil to prosper you, you are fool. The blessings of the Lord is one that makes it rich and doesn't ask sorrow to you. So if you trust in sorrow, if you are trusting in sorrow to be, you are, I'm going to bring through sorrow, you are missing it. You are missing it. Hear me, child. God loves you. God loves you. And this is why, why is it, this is why I'm, where I brought this message this morning is because God loves you. He wants your life to change. He wants us, your story, story to change. You know what I'm saying right now? Hear me. He, is it, when you when you become serious with God, in the Christian center, some of your religion will not like you. Some of your friends will not like you. But they will still like you after. When something is in your pocket, Huh? When God open the door for you? When you know, you know people who have money, people like them. Are you aware that? Yes. Just have money. You see people who didn't like you before, like you now. Because you have money. And if some people want to even say they don't, because you have money, they hate you. Give them offering. Just send them money. They just to bless you. They will change their mind. Money is powerful. As far as where we are concerned. But there's something that's higher than money. The anointing. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. There are some things money cannot solve. There are some sicknesses that money cannot kill. There are some sicknesses that even if you have all the money in this world, you can't kill it. But the anointing will destroy it. Anointing does what money can do and what money cannot do. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, when you begin to respect that anointing, how do you show respect for it? The respect shows that when the door opens, you are the first to get here and stay to get the anointing. When my pastor was there, my pastor in me, pastor in me, any meeting the pastor called, guess who was there at the Lotus to my wife? We were there. Front row, diligent, faithful. We respect the anointing. We respect, up to today, we still respect the anointing of God upon my, my, my pastor. We respected and honored and reverenced the anointing. 
I don't care what the devil suggests to your mind. They don't like you naturally. They don't like you. It doesn't matter who likes me, who doesn't like me. This man is anointed to help me. My children enjoy perfect health. So what am I looking for? The anointing. Smilgus said, he said, I would rather have the anointing of the Holy Ghost on me for five minutes than to have the whole world with a face around it. In other words, if you give me the whole world first around, I will prefer to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost for just five minutes. Church, um, what I want to do, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like other churches that have no, I have no respect for the things of God. We are looking for, some people are looking for excuse not to come to church, excuse not to come to church, excuse to stay out, to stay in the world and be talking like the world. And then the sickness of the world is coming. If you, if you make friends with the world, it's too dangerous. Because you might be enjoying your flesh, you enjoy, and your flesh you enjoy, and you're laughing, and you enjoy anything. But when the problem comes, you do you have an answer for the problem? Because many people wait on the when they are facing the problem now, sometimes it's too late. It's too late. This is the time, church. This is the time to take God serious. I am pleading with you today to take God serious. In your own interest. Not in the interest of God. People are passing every day. They are passing every day. They are passing every day. You go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. There are people, more people who are getting sick. I mean, somebody was sharing with us sometime in, a, in a, this Azokul uh, somewhere. Somebody, somebody who had HIV went there and was sharing with us, one lady. And she said the crowd there just for HIV alone. I'm not talking about other sickness too. Just for HIV alone, the crowd. So they have to go very early in the morning. They have to go early in the morning. They call they are looking for free. Uh, what do you call, they call it? It's Rovara. What do you want to give to HIV people? They are looking for it. They don't have the money to buy, so they go to where they can get it. And they are, they are pressing. The crowd is pressing to the place. What if they are pressing here to get healed of HIV? The enemy knows where the solution is. He will try to get into your mind to discourage you to move somewhere else. No solution. If I were you, I'll change my mind. I report, like the prodigal son, I will arise. I will arise and go to my father. The prodigal son was so poor and wretched, he didn't want money to he couldn't even eat pig food. They didn't give him, nobody gave him pig food to eat. He said, but the Bible says he came to himself. Where was he before? He was deceived by the devil. The devil deceived him to leave his father's house and go to the neighboring land to so he would swander his money. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And the day the prodigal son rose up and said, well, well, he went to his father. His father threw a party. The father didn't condemn him. You know, we don't condemn you for what you have done. Hear me, what I'm trying to say this morning, Joe, is let's turn around. Let's put the kingdom of God. Let's seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then we know that if we do that, all other things will be added to us. The money we are looking for. Relationship we are looking for. Our health. Every other thing that we need will be added to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm sure you enjoyed today's edition of Story. the program. Now, if you are not born again, you need to get born again. That is the best battle that you need to fight and then win. That's the most important battle. Actually, that is the most important battle. That's right. So that you can lay your hand on the gift of salvation. Wow. And doing that is so simple. Mm. You simply believe, no matter what your background is, no matter what religious upbringing you've had, right. you simply believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, wow. as the Lord of your life. That's right. You believe in your heart, right. and then you confess it from your mouth. That's right. Simple. Then you get born again. It's a finished work. It is a finished work. Hallelujah. So embrace it. Join me embracing it right now. Praise God. Dear God. Dear God. 
I accept Jesus Christ. Accept Jesus Christ. As your son. As your son. As my savior. As my savior. As the Lord of my life. Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say Satan. Say Satan. It's all over. It's all over. Between me. Between me. And you. And you. I'm for Jesus Christ right Jesus now. Jesus Christ right now. I am for the anointed one right the now. The anointed one right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If it truly really meant that simple prayer. That's right. When you said it, you are born again. That's right. You have been changed from being in darkness, in the kingdom of darkness. That's right. To the kingdom of God right Hallelujah. now. Hallelujah. And then you can begin to enjoy your rights and privileges Amen. in Christ. Amen. As you get rooted in the living church. Amen. Where you can be taught accordingly. That's right. Now if you are sick in your body. I would also like to pray with God you. Wants you well, yeah. He wants you well. Amen. God wants you healthy. Amen. God wants you to walk in victory. To be free that's from any form of oppression. That's right. That's right. So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I pronounce you healed. Amen. I pronounce you delivered right that's now. Right, that's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Satan, lose them. That's right. And let them go. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just you know, like I said earlier, you need to prayerfully look for a living church. That's right. Where you can be taught your rights and privileges in Christ. That's right. Where you will know the truth of the word of God. Amen. So that you can uncover the lies of the devil. That's right. So prayerfully look for one this week. Amen. See you this next is my time. Mission, the great commission to make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them the word of the Lord. Pastor and Mrs. Lutu at the Eagle Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. Tuesdays, Bible studies and leadership training by 6 p.m. Fridays, prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Then we sit A14 Ground Floor, Rochester Plaza, by Loki Christian Bookshop, with Season 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965-8883 or email Eagle Christian Center at yahoo.com. Make it a date with the Lord and experience God's transformation power in your life. You will never be the same again.